Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for September 24th, 2020. Well, doggone it, yesterday we had a pretty rough day with the market gapping up. The Dow gapped up about 176 points and then ended up reversing the day um, right at price resistance, something that we talked about yesterday, that possibility of that reversal. And apparently those bears had retreated and they dug in to defend these price resistance levels in a big way. Selling off, leaving behind some nasty looking bearish engulfing candles in the index charts and also confirming the downtrend. So what does that mean for this morning? Well, how about we settle in, grab yourself something to drink and let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, everyone, we are facing a market that's kind of uncertain. Um, we had a, a rather volatile session last night in the um, futures markets, trying to move up and back. We're, we're all over the place. We've had some positive prints this morning, but right now futures are just kind of looking very muted. It's as if the market is a bit shell-shocked, doesn't exactly know what to do um, with itself. And there is some reason for that. We certainly have confirmed um, our downtrend here yesterday, and we certainly confirmed our price resistance point in the chart. And hopefully in that morning video yesterday, you, um, you were aware of that and hopefully protected yourself um, of that potential um setting up yesterday unfortunately that pop and drop yesterday was very very damaging and i suspect it was quite damaging to the confidence of traders um, as we continue this very volatile pullback in the market so what do we have to look forward to here today well Futures have been kind of back and forth. Right now, we're looking at a very muted, somewhat mixed open as we continue to toss about. But I got to tell you, there isn't a whole lot here to really get too excited about just yet. We did test some price support levels right here in the diamonds, but it's not really what I would consider that significant level of support. And that possibility that we could continue to slip on lower certainly does exist. If we take a look at our moving averages, notice that we are now only about 2% from the 200 day moving average, less than 2%, just actually about 1.6% to that 200 day moving average. And it seems that the possibility of us sinking down to that level, at least in the next few days, um, is a possibility. So no one wanted to believe that that was even possible, but here we are, we're staring it in the face. And we could see over the next few days um, that possibility of a test down in this area to um, catch that 200 day. Now notice we have a 500 day moving average down here too. That gives us that nice little extra layer of support and a rather substantial level of price support here in the chart. So possibility does exist. Will that happen today? I'm not going to suggest that. As a matter of fact, I think we're so severely oversold in the short term that a relief rally seems somewhat likely that we could get a little bit of relief back up before we experience that move um, down below. But what, let's watch that close. It's certainly possible, particularly with the news events and things that we're dealing with and the uncertainty that we have in the market. It's certainly possible, even though we are considerably oversold, to stretch that right down there and see that level. So let's take a look at the SPY. Unfortunately, the SPY not any prettier in the chart. We have definitely confirmed our downtrend. We are extremely bearish, a, a very bearish engulfing candle here um, in that chart. And unfortunately, here in the SPY, we have, uh, well, we've got a little bit of price support in here. We're kind of floating in midair between this 50 and 200 day moving average. Current momentum of the market would suggest more selling could easily 
come into play but once again that oversold condition also gives us that hope that we get a little bit of a relief rally prior to um, that potential attack down there but obviously the bears are back and they are um, hungry so be really really careful here and make sure if you are buying long trades that you have a really good plan on those long trades because being kind of floating out here in midair between these two averages it's very very common guys it's a pattern that um, we talk about a lot in hit run candlesticks right way options is that failure of the 50 the rally back and then we see those sellers come in and that usually triggers that move down toward that 200 day so keep that in mind it's very it's a very typical pattern we certainly can respond from here and come back up but right now i'm not seeing that we have um we've not cleared the field of the uncertainty that exists out there in the market to really provide that that inspiration of confidence to move us back up at least at the moment or at least confidently move us back up but anything is possible let's take a look at the cues qqq also, lots of technical damage uh, forming here in the chart. We have now had a failure here at the 50-day moving average twice. I want, I want to make note that our shorter-term averages have crossed down through the 50. They're creating a significant level of price resistance up here. And then also notice that we could be rounding out this top. Notice that 50-day moving average starting to potentially round. And if we rally back, we could be rallying back back right into a lower 50-day moving average that makes us um, makes for a challenging place for the bulls to push through we'll have to watch that carefully and obviously the bears are here to defend right now so keep that in mind we're starting to round some of these things over and the technicals on the charts aren't looking all that spectacular. Let's take a look at IWM. Now, IWM um, didn't even pretend yesterday. We had the Dow kind of gapping up, but IWM really didn't participate yesterday in that bullish sentiment. Um, so we pretty darn quickly just started to sell off in IWM. Notice IWM, and I mentioned this yesterday, that possibility that we could test down here that 200 day moving average and now we have done that we have failed the 200 day and so what we'll want to be watching for is any kind of recovery of that 200 day if we continue to slip lower however and it wouldn't be all that out of the question to slip lower to find a little bit stronger level of price support in the chart certainly seems like um, it could occur but the 200 that 500 day could also provide a little bit of help right there one thing i gotta say that's really difficult for um, iwm right now is continuing to see oil um, continuing to sell off continuing to see those financials selling off the um, ugly news that's out there in the financials with um, JP Morgan potentially getting fined a billion dollars for well playing games with the market and um, pretty ugly stuff going on out there could keep us a bit on the bearish side here for a while so watch that carefully we just we've got a lot of things to overcome let's take a look at t2122 that four week new high new low this is our this is our hopefulness this is the silver lining out there that we want to see we're down here um, in the extreme levels of that bullish reversal zone that area where we typically bounce from I should move my markers over here um, t2122 is very very reliable now it doesn't give us the exact date and time that we're going to reverse but it does put us in a in a place where it tells us that we are in that condition of oversold and that potential bounce can occur but i do want to point out that possible point right in here where we can linger down in an area like this for a while so we'll want to keep that in mind we can linger down here and that doesn't mean even though that we're down here that we can't see more selling coming into the market but right now the 
um, indicator is suggesting that we are considerably oversold and that a bounce may be due a little bit of a relief rally. That doesn't necessarily mean we rip all the way back up. And as a matter of fact, I don't see the, uh, the market confidence being the place where we rip all the way back up with so much uncertainty out there. But we'll want to watch that carefully. Any relief rally, any little bounce back up could set us up for more downside to retest those 200 day moving averages. If we take a look at T2101, T2101, this is also rather disturbing to me in that um, we struggled and struggled and struggled as we were rallying. We couldn't get the market breadth to increase. When, when market breadth is declining and markets are rallying, um, hitting new record highs and just continuing to go up, it indicated that fewer and fewer companies were holding on to that rally. And I mentioned many times in the morning videos, what happens when those big techs actually roll over and start to turn over? Um, they've been lifting the market pretty much on their own. What happens when that occurs? Well, we've, we're now seeing what happens when that occurs, when those tech stocks start to sell off. Um, what we're actually seeing on the selling waves is market breadth increasing. That's where we're getting the activity is on that sell side. So be really, really careful here overall. Now, one thing I got to say that is still quite perplexing to me is this VIX. With the selling that we saw yesterday, we did get the VIX rising a little bit, but it doesn't, it, it's not normal activity here in the VIX. We barely wiggle around um, when we see 500 point sell-offs. That is really odd. I don't know what that means. I don't know if if the market has just become so complacent, we just don't care. We're tired, we're exhausted, we don't care. I don't know what that means. It could possibly mean that we really don't have that much fear and that the sell-off could quickly bounce back. I don't know but it's kind of an odd circumstance. And we're gonna to have to really stay on our toes, realizing that we're at a 28 handle here on the VIX. That is not a comfortable place to be. Obviously, it's affecting option prices, wide bid ask spreads, um, high implied volatility in these options. So be really, really careful out there. Um, it's an odd circumstance. We would normally see on a sell-off like this, we would see that VIX really spiking just not happening and it is very, very odd. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. We do have a few things on that economic calendar we wanna pay attention to for today. Um, we certainly have a bunch of Fed speak. Those Fed, uh, Fed parade is still going on, but uh, take a look at this. We have um, that new home sales and jobless claims this morning. So jobless claims could be really important today. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Um, if, if they come in better than expected, obviously that could help the market. If they come in worse than expected, it would be a terrible time for that to occur. Um, if, if those jobless claims were to spike back up, it would be a uh, pretty rough for the market right now with the psychology that we've got going on. So watch that carefully. Um, and then the new home sales, of course, home sales have been very, very good, very strong. We'll want to keep an eye on that at 10 a.m. Also note that at 10 a.m., uh, Jerome Powell will continue um, his um, uh, talking circuit um, this week. So watch that. Um, I doubt we learn anything new, but we'll want to pay attention to it. And then all afternoon, we just have one Fed speaker after another. We've got a parade of Fed speakers going on. Um, of course, we always want to pay attention to those. Fed balance sheet here at 430. I wouldn't expect any problem with that. Um, everyone knows Fed balance sheet is absolutely out of control. We're buying up everything possible to try and hold the market up. So balance sheet just continues to grow. Nobody seems to care um, about that. So um, that's what we've got going on the calendar today. On the earnings calendar, we have our biggest day of the week, about 26 companies reporting uh, today. And we do have some notables that I'll want to point out here that we'll want to pay attention to. Uh, DRI. DRI. I cannot type this morning. DRI will be reporting today. Uh, Darden Restaurants will want to uh, take note of that. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Obviously, COVID 
certainly has has affected restaurants and unless they have uh, delivery or uh, curbside pickup it's really affected them it's been interesting that the Darden has held up quite well um, here recently we'll see how those earnings affect that today watch that close Costco Costco has been a pretty good beneficiary of um, a COVID market as you can see rallying very very strongly um, because of that people stocking up and staying home and um, we'll want to keep an eye on this as it reports today Costco um, we also have um, Blackberry reporting today I don't know that that's going to be particularly notable it looks like it's gapping up substantially however this morning um, this candle right here on the new TC2000 this is showing us the the morning futures what's going on here so we're perking up here this morning in blackberry something to pay attention to kmx kmx is on the list today we'll want to pay attention to that um, as it reports it has been challenging these um, highs here in the market really pushing hard trying to break through and continue to reach out for new highs kmx looking quite strong overall keep an eye on that we've got fedex reporting that's going to be an important report that we're going to want to pay attention to keep that in mind um, watch that closely uh, jbl jbl is on the list for a possible uh, for a port report we've got rad oops rad will be reporting keep that one in mind watch that one closely tcom tcom is on the list for the day you'll want to pay attention to that and m tn um val uh vale resorts not val vale resorts um will be reporting and as you can see pushing up into this price resistance level in the chart it's been an upside trend gotta wonder um how uh, ski resorts are going to do if those covid numbers continue to rise like they are right now here in the u.s could be a challenging fall and winter for us um uh, I don't know um, it has been one odd year and going to continue to be uh, a very challenging year uh, going forward <coughs> excuse me so with that how about we take a look at a few stocks that may be setting up but before we do if you guys could do me a favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time i post one of these videos and if you find these videos to be helpful if you found today's video to be helpful please click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment it helps us to continue to grow and also please feel free to share these videos out there in fact i truly truly appreciate it when you do share them out there it helps us grow um, um, more subscribers to the channel and i truly truly appreciate it you guys are awesome now i gotta tell you um a pretty pretty rough day to be recommending any long trades but i i want to point out nike um nike um had a great report um their online sales increasing by some 80 some percent so online sales obviously everyone's getting very comfortable buying their products online now and any rest or pullback in here sets up an opportunity in Nike. Certainly gapping up big, um, we could see this pulling back and resting in here. We may come all the way back to this trend just in a nice rest or consolidating move, but then we'll want to watch for that upside potential. Nike certainly very strong in their earnings. Sales are very, very strong. Keep a close eye on that. Nike could come around. We also might want to keep an eye on Johnson & Johnson. J&J &J had a little bit of a lift up. They've got something going on with... Um, uh, vaccine and they tried to lift a little bit as a matter of fact um, Nike and J&J &J were the only two uh, stocks that really won yesterday in the Dow so little tiny move up this is still in a downtrend uh, vaccine things are pretty tough to trade because um, all those clinical trials and things um, they stub their toe a lot on those they can be very vo um, volatile but watch that closely there may be an opportunity there in that trade uh, take a look at UUP this is kind of interesting that as we continue to print money and and really debasing the dollar um, with all of our money printing it's kind of interesting that we're seeing the dollar actually rise so take a look at that dollar coming up out of this bottom 
rising. This is the US dollar uh, bullish fund um, ETF. It's not the actual dollar. But notice this strong rally back up. This is breaking above a 50 day moving average. This is what we call a possible round of bottom breakout pattern where the dollar is rising and any rest or pullback in here sets up an opportunity. And then we would be looking for this to start moving up, testing these levels up in here. If that US dollar keeps rising, that may be something to pay attention to that's certainly going to also have a negative effect on anything in oil so if you're thinking about or any commodity actually um, will have a negative effect on um, oil sector so if you wanted to find a short trade you might want to look into the oil sector you might want to look into um, things such as gold and silver GLD pulling back hard uh, uh, an equal response down as that dollar surges in strength so we'll want to watch um, uh, gold and silver any rally back in here on gold and silver could set up that opportunity for a short right now technicals it, it seems kind of unlikely in a market where we're printing money like crazy that we could actually be seeing that dollar rising but that is what's going on so keep a close eye on that there are stocks all over the place in both sides of the market um um, looking bullish or bearish. I got to say the oil sector is incredibly bearish right now. As a matter of fact, ExxonMobil has lost about 50% um, so far this year. Not looking good and may be coming down here for a low. Now, one thing we can do as option traders, we can look at levels like this and say, as we approach down here, we might want to look at putting on bullish put credit spreads or something like that for that potential bounce back up. But I got to tell you it's as COVID continues to rise here in the United States it's a tough it's a tough thing to see how we're going to start bringing back the demand if uh, those numbers keep rising and um, issues like that continue to grow so lots of challenging charts out there not too many that I really feel comfortable um, recommending um, Perhaps when we find a bottom, when we, we start stabilizing a little bit, there'll be a lot of opportunity. But right now, pretty shaky out there in the market. So be very, very careful how you approach this market today. Anything is possible. We're going to have to stay on our toes. We're going to have to expect volatility to remain high. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a great day and um, stay safe. Stay safe. With these numbers increasing, it's very concerning out there um, seeing Europe uh, possibly facing a double dip recession now with their cases rising substantially. Um, we've got a challenging fall ahead of us. So let's buckle in. Let's be really careful. Be safe. Protect your capital. Protect yourselves. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Have a good one, everyone.